everybody, please welcome our last speaker. He's known to many of you. He's a former Santa Monica mayor and a city councillor. Here he was. Now he's the executive director of an organization that he helped found, Move LA. Please welcome Denny Zane. Well, I really have, I think, two missions here today. One is to show you how what's happening here in Santa Monica is going to connect up with a larger future throughout the county, which I think is extraordinary. But before I do, Rick made, I think, a very important point about the importance of model building on a local level. When communities um, learn to do things well and successfully, it becomes a very, very important lesson, not just for ourselves, but for other communities. But in addition, leadership on a community level that finds a way to provide leadership on a regional and county level is also vitally important. And Santa Monica has for a long time played a very, very important role in our transportation system here. Uh, when I first joined the council in 1981, Christine Reed, a council member, was on the LA Metro board. Um, her role there was vital um, to us ultimately gaining agreement from Metro to buy the Expo line in 1990. Pam O'Connor, a council member and mayor in Santa Monica, joined the Metro Board later, and her efforts were central to getting the exposition light rail line uh, developed to Culver City. Of course, she was hoping it would, it would come to Santa Monica, but we would need more money, and that's where this celebration comes in. I hope you can see this uh, picture well, because if you, if you can, you can see that while there are six members of the city council here personally, another member, Terry O'Day, right here, a Santa Monican, was at the very start one of the key creators of Move LA, along with Santa Monica resident Diane Forte, right here. And of course, I must mention my young son, Alexander, who now is as tall as this guy. But this was the press conference where we celebrated the passage of Measure R in 2008, a measure which had been kicked off by Santa Monica's Terry O'Day, Diane Forte, and myself when we began meeting first at the Snug Harbor on Wilshire Boulevard and built from there coalition to convince Mayor Villaraigosa, Supervisor Xavier Oslovsky, and others to move forward with a ballot measure in 2008. It must be said that at the key kickoff moment, Pam O'Connor became our mayor, who was our mayor, became chair of the Metro Board, and therefore was in a position to make the motion to start this extraordinary ball rolling, where we raised, voters voted 67.8%, raised $40 billion, and started a transit revolution in Los Angeles County. Now we are... So Santa Monica was not only a model builder, it was a leadership giver to the county in this effort. But now we are looking at something even more exciting. Metro is considering, I think, 90% likely to place another measure on the 2016 ballot. It might be a $90 billion measure, more than double Measure R. But if they also choose to extend Measure R, it'll be a $120 billion measure. Let's get this straight, folks. Measure R was $40 billion. What we're looking at now will either double down or triple down on that effort. And what will that mean for us? Well, let's back up a little to 100 years ago. This is the system we had, Southern California, 100 years ago. This system, as you recall, was purchased and closed by a consortium of automobile-related industries. So that 25 years ago, this is what we had in Los Angeles County by way of rail transit. Now, there's a lot of buses running around that are too tiny for you to see, but there is no rail transit. Now, 25 years ago is nothing, right? How many people remember the opening of the Third Street Promenade? Right? That was 26 years ago. So what happened since, happened since the promenade opened. 
And this is where we will be counting the things that have been built uh, prior to R and that are under construction now with Measure R. There are five lines under construction. Now, we have, of course, the Expo line, which will open in the spring, but in addition, the Wilshire subway is under construction heading this way. It's funded to get to um, the VA in Brentwood on, the, on this side of the 405. We'll need a little bit more money to get it to Santa Monica. Maybe the new measure can help provide that money. But there's the Crenshaw line. Um, I'll point it out. There's the Crenshaw line coming right down here from Expo down to and connecting to LAX. And there is an LAX connector that will be under construction soon. And of course, here's the extension of the subway. In the downtown area here, there's an underground light rail system which will hook up all the light rail systems so you don't have to make so many transfers. We'll be able to go from Santa Monica all the way out to Whittier soon without a transfer. Pasadena will be able to go to Long Beach without a transfer, all of us passing through Long Beach. And of course, there's the gold line out in Pasadena, past Pasadena, going out to where Rick used to be the city manager in Azusa. So I think he's got a big relationship with this effort. But considering what might be on the ballot, where could we go with the next system? Now check this out. This is the kind of connectivity that really will be transformational for our traffic congestion problem, for our economic development problem, and potentially for our air quality problem. I would say to you now that about 90% of what's here is likely to get built if we pass in 2016 this measure. There are a couple of lines that may drop out of the list, but mostly this is going to happen. Um, that's pretty extraordinary given that 25 years ago we had nothing. But there's more than rail that's needed. You've heard from people talking now about first mile, last mile. We've got to make it easy for people to get there. And that means pedestrian access, that means bike share, that means car share, and things which make it really easy. We also need to think about our boulevards as opportunities for bus rapid transit. You know, we had all these available corridors for rail transit that we could build on fairly quickly and fairly inexpensively. But we've also got extraordinary numbers of boulevards that are largely underused because the freeways are now, have taken so much of the life off of those boulevards. There's Venice Boulevard, there's Valley Boulevard, there's Vermont, Van Owen, Victory, and that's just the V's, or some of the V's. And they could become not only BRT, but complete streets with bicycle ways and mixed use development with affordable housing that creates real community development opportunity and an opportunity to meet the housing needed um, in, our, in our housing marketplace. But this here excites me as much as anything. This is the opportunity for us to invest in a clean goods movement system as well. Now I know because back in the 90s I was the director of the Coalition for Clean Air and when I was there, I learned that the great unsolved problem of Southern California air quality was not really clean cars anymore. Hybrids, electric vehicles and the like were going to solve a lot of our clean air problem from cars. The big unsolved problem was diesel exhaust from buses and trucks and off-road vehicles and the like. It was not only the last remaining great challenge, it was also the worst of it. Diesel emissions are among the worst of the toxic air contaminants and among the worst cancer-causing uh, air contaminants that we have, but we can solve this problem. We've made tremendous progress already in our buses, and we can do the same with our trucks, but it takes money. It takes money because these technologies take 30 years um, on the road before, before, they're, before they finish their useful life. Manufacturers need to know that there is a market for the long run if they're going to bring the cleanest technologies to the marketplace. This new measure can provide the resource needed to finally, once and for all, truly clean the air of Southern California. 
and as well to connect up our airports with rail throughout the region, not just LAX, but Ontario as well and Burbank as well, enabling us to have direct rail access to air travel without having to cause the traffic and emissions that we now experience. These are extraordinary opportunities before us. They will be on the ballot in November 2016. This is a product of this community's leadership, both by emulation and by direct effort. I really want to thank Christine Reed, Mayor Christine Reed, Mayor Pam O'Connor, uh, Terry O'Day, and uh, Diane Forte, and my son, uh, for the effort that they've contributed to this effort, because Santa Monica's have been all over the county making this happen. Thank you very much for your being here. <laughs>